Alright my friends, so now we're gonna talk about the second most important function in Python, we have the input. So, so far what we have learned is, we can use the print in order to show something to the user. But now we're gonna go and flip things, we're gonna go and get something back from the user. So for that we can use the input function, it is as well a built-in Python function that lets you get input from the user. And my friend, this input function is used almost in any application or website you are interacting with. Like for example, if you go to LinkedIn, First, you have to go and log in or register. So the application wants an input from you. You can go and here and add your email and some passwords. So the LinkedIn is using an input in order to get something from the user. And as well the same thing in ChatGPT, the place where you go and ask something, where you're gonna go and write like a prompt, like explain input function. This window is using an input function in order to get something from the user. So my friend, this function will be used almost in any application or website. And we use it in order to get something from the user. Okay, so now let's understand how this exactly works behind the scenes. Now we are writing our code and we would like to get something from the user. So we write in our code input and in between parentheses we write a message. So for example enter a value. Now if you go and execute it what can happen? Python first is gonna go and take the message and display it in the output. So you're gonna see in the output enter a value and now what can happen? Everything gonna pause and wait for an input from the user. So now our application gonna wait until the user types something. It could be any value anything. So for example the user enters 50. Now once the user hits enter the value 50 will be returned back to our code, to our program. So as you can see now we have like interaction. We are not only displaying something in the output like the print, now we are asking for the user to give us something, to give us a value. So this is exactly how the input works in Python. Okay, so back to Visual Studio, let's go and practice the input. So now let's go and ask the users for their names. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the function input. And now then we open a parenthesis. And now inside it, we're gonna go and write a message to make sure that the user knows we are waiting for an input. So we're gonna give a command like enter your name and then double points in order to indicate that we are waiting, of course. So actually that's it. So let's go and execute it. Now you can see in the output our message, enter your name. But this time the program is waiting for an input from us. So now everything is waiting and paused until you give a value. So for example, we're gonna go and give my name Bara. And now as you can see, as I'm typing, the program is still waiting until I hit enter. So once I hit enter, the waiting is ended and the value is returned back to my code. But now in this example, we have an issue. The value that I give to the program is completely lost and nothing happens because I'm not doing anything with the returned value. So it is like a total waste. Now instead of that we're gonna go and do something with this value, with this returned value from the user. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and store it inside a variable, like for example name, and then we're gonna go and assign the returned value from the input to our variable. So now I'm saying whatever value that we're gonna get in return from the input should be stored inside the variable name. But we are not done yet because okay we have just created a variable in the memory and we have a value for it but so far we are not using this variable anywhere now as we learned in order to use a variable we can go and print it so let's go and print this variable we're gonna say you are so this is the static part and then we can use the whatever value that is stored inside the variable name so now let's go and test it now again in the output the program is waiting to enter your name so let's go and do that and hit enter and now we can see another message it says you are then we have our our name Bara. So again what happened here, we asked the user for their name, we stored the returned value inside a variable and then we printed this variable. So that means we are getting something from the user and then we are printing it back. Alright so now let's understand in details what is hard coded values and dynamic values from input. Let's go and create another variable called country and let's assign for it your country. So I'm gonna go and add Germany. So now by looking to this that means we have two variables, we have the name and the country. And of course those variables needs values. Now if we check the country over here, we call the value Germany as hard coded value because we have manually entered this value inside our code. So that means the value will never change unless you go over here and you type something else. So that means this value is predefined before the execution. I have written this value Germany before running the program. So that means anyone opens your code gonna see immediately you are storing the value Germany inside the country. But now if you look to the 
variable name, no one knows about the value before the execution. It is not hard coded inside the code. The value gonna be assigned during the execution to whatever value came from the user. So that means the value gonna be totally dynamic, depends on the user input. It is not hard coded. So now let's make use of those two variables inside the print. So I'm gonna go and rewrite the whole thing like this. We're gonna say name, then comma, and then we're gonna make static parts comes from, and then we're gonna use the country variable. So let's go and execute it. Now again, we have to enter the name. Let's say this time we're gonna say Maria and hit enter. Maria comes from Germany. So again, the first part of the message came from the user and the Germany word here came from our code. So if I execute this like 100 times, I will get always comes from Germany, but I might get different like input from the users. So these are two different ways on how we assign values to the variables, either using hard coded value like this, or by using an interactive function like the input, where we're gonna make everything dynamic. So now using the input and the variables, you have the feeling that our code is not only smart and dynamic, but also interactive. So there is like an interaction between our code and the user. We are asking the user for a value, and then we are getting this value and doing something about it. So things are live and interactive. And this is exactly what we do if we are building applications. So my friends, this is the power of the input. So, so far we have learned many things. We have learned two built-in functions in Python, the input and the print. And as well, we have learned about the comments and the variables. So now I'm gonna show you how everything works together behind the scenes. So now let's say that you have the following code and you went and execute it. So as we learned, Python gonna go and execute it line by line. The first line is about the variables. So Python here gonna go and create a new variable inside the box in the memory called X. And then it gonna go and assign for it the value A. So A gonna be stored inside a variable called x and that's it for the first line in the second line we are saying print x so that means first python has to go and get the value from the variables so it's gonna go and search for the variable name x and read and returns the value a back to your code so now we have everything the value and python can go and print this message in the output so you will get in the output a and now python gonna go to the third line and gonna say aha now we have like the special character hash this means here it's like a comment it is a note for the human I don't really care about it so I can go and skip it so nothing gonna happen in the third line we made this line only for us now Python gonna go to the next row and here we have many things so we are saying I would like to go and create a new variable called y but the value for this variable we're gonna get it from the user and in order to do that we are using the input function so first Python gonna go and print the message enter a value in the output in order to tell the user to enter something and now everything gonna pause so the whole program gonna wait and pause until the user enters something. So let's say our user go and hit P and then enter. Now this value B will be returned back to our program, to our code. And now Python has a value for our variable Y. So now it can go to the variables box and create a new variable called Y and assign for it the value B. Now to the last line, print Y, the same thing gonna happen. Python gonna go and access the variable Y in order to get its value, the B, and then go and print it in the output. So again, by looking to this, the value of x, it is specified and hard coded inside our code, but the value of y, it is completely dynamic and we got it from the user. And as you saw, we use the print function in order to show something to the user and we use the input function in order to get something from the user. So my friends, with that, you have understood many basic commands in Python in order to make your code smart, dynamic and interactive. So as you can see, my friends, programming is amazing, right? All right, friends, so let's have a look to our progress. Now with that, we have covered everything about the input function we can go and close it and we can say we are done with the first chapter of python so with that we have very solid foundation and introduction to python so we can go and close this chapter and we are done with that now the next one gonna be very interesting we're gonna learn about the data types in python this can be amazing in order to learn how to manipulate our data